Hi folks, today we're going to be looking at the InFocus M512, which is one of the first 4G LTE Android handsets to come out of Shenzhen in China. That's, you know, the clone kind of um, second tier, I call it. This baby is actually made by Foxconn, the same people who manufacture the iPhones, if you remember all your controversy uh, about them. Um, the specifications, 5-inch screen, um, 720p screen, 8 megapixel rear camera to front, um, and it has a 2500 milliamp hour battery. In the box, as you can see, is uh, a very reasonable user manual except for one small point I'm, i think maybe because i've got an early version <laughs> this is not quite ready for international use yet it's all in chinese and this sort of <laughs> feeds through to the rest i think i've got an early version so i'm not going to hold that against them right now uh usb cable and uh, the power block and as for the unit itself well as you can see it has a fairly nice um look about it the, the thing i like about it is it has still got a um, micro SD slot in the top so you can slot in um, extra storage um, micro only single sim this one and the other thing which is interesting is it's a non-removable battery you can take the back off but you can't get that battery out it's seal it's locked in which um, is obviously a design consideration for a particular reason I'm not sure why they're doing this more nowadays it may be something to do with antennas or something but anyway that's the way life is. Good job, it's a 2500 milliamp hour battery, so at least you'll hopefully get some decent time. This has features NFC, um, and that's uh, obviously pretty cool for uh, these days when so many more accessories are arriving with NFC on them. Right, so let's take a look at some of the things it does. There are a number of interesting points about this, uh, this handset. It's, it's a quad core, 1.2 gigahertz um, processor with a one gigabyte of RAM. Um, so it's not to the two gigabyte standard, but it is running a Qualcomm chipset rather than the MTK. So that's in itself an interesting feature that it's not running the standard, the standard one that most of the phones we look at is running. It has Android 4.4 on it. So it's running KitKat. So it's straight up to date with that. So I can prove by doing all these clever things that you see. There you go, there's uh, Android KitKat on there. I think the Antutu is somewhere around 17,000, which is fairly good for a, for a uh, Chinese phone, but it's not, not mind-blowing. As you can tell, the screen is pretty nice. When you consider the price of this product, and that's really the crucial thing, you're talking about the first 4G LTE phone out of China, and the price is astonishing. It is absolutely astonishing to get this kind of specification in a phone like this. So let's run through a few of the features. One of the interesting things, um, I think it's because I've got a, an early model actually, which is not fully internationalized, but there are quite a few instances I've taken a screenshot where the actual interface of the unit comes up very Chinese. So you'll get this quite a lot because it's got quite a few Chinese apps installed. If you look, I can you see that um, you've got some strange Chinese um, security software and stuff and Baidu is installed by default. Google is not in, Google search is not installed by default. Um, so you have to do it all yourself. So you look here, there's even the maps, that's a Chinese version of the maps. I have to, I had to install Google maps myself. Again, I'm not sure, I, I have a feeling this is because it's an early, early model and once they internationalize it properly, um, assuming they do, then it will come with more uh, especially a user manual, but it'll come with more uh, West, uh, Western type stuff. So I'll uh, run up my favorite site. I mean, this is cached, so I have to admit this is not clean off the block and it's running on Wi Fi, obviously. But as you can see, it's handling the images on our site fairly well. It's a very good screen, actually. I mean, it's, it, it does the job very well, um, so you can't complain about that. Um, let me see if I can pull in an. Yeah, let's have a look. I'll do a YouTube video here, just to give you an idea of how this is running. So here you go. So here's the the cars trailer, the, which is showing off the video quality. Hopefully you can see that. And again, you know the screen, even though it's not a a, a full 1080p, it's it's good. You get a nice result out of that, and there's no glitching on the video and stuff, so it's pretty efficient. Yeah, it's quite pretty. 
And here we have uh, Crazy Racer, which is uh, just a 3D racing game, just giving you an idea of the graphics, as you can see. Um, disregard my bad driving, but it's fairly good. It's pretty crisp, no glitching, uh, responsiveness on the accelerometer. It's pretty well put together. Yeah, so no compromises there because of the Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Whoa, I don't know what that meant. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. That's the that's the game. What about the camera? I hear you ask. Well, let's do a quick. I mean, again, nothing untoward about the camera. It just takes shots. There you go. Let me. Um, and video. Obviously, I'll put up samples so you can see the camera quality, um, real life. As you can see, it takes photographs is exactly what you want. Eight megapixels is not the biggest around, but hey, I've seen some pretty bad 13 megapixels around around <laughs> on these phones. So I guess, guess this one is not going to be that bad. Want to see something really funny with this phone, which I'm not really sure about? Let's just do this. So power off. You get a nice little tune. It's not that. That's not what I'm going to show you. Hold on. <laughs> Be patient. Right, it's gone, it's switched off. I can't remove the battery to actually um, ensure it uh, is completely switched off, but if I've left it a few seconds, I've, I'm assuming that's completely switched off. Watch, press the power button. I'm oh, sorry, press the power button. <laughs> that's kind of the fastest power on I've ever seen. Is this thing actually switching off or is it going into some sort of ultra standby? I've never come across that before. That's the speed at which it boots. No matter how long you leave it off, if you take the SIM card out, or you, if you turn it off, that's how long it takes to get up, powered up to start. Whew. Wow, if that's real, that's unbelievable. So of course you want to know about the 4G. How does it operate in 4G? Well, that's gonna be tricky. I've gotta find some 4G coverage. <laughs> that's a joke. Uh, let me see what I can do and then we'll try it. Okay, folks, we're gonna do a very unscientific test here. On the left-hand side, a THL T100S, uh, octa-core with two gigs of RAM, running a 3G SIM from O2 uh, HSDPA Plus. Um, you see it's got five or four bars on there, so full reception. On the right-hand side, this is the in-focus, the M512. Uh, opt quad core running uh, with one gigabyte of RAM running a 4G o uh, EE sim again with full bars on the uh, on the connection we're going to run a little speed test and see how they run how they uh, work out opposite each other so we'll start with a 4G and there and hit them So not much in it at the halfway mark with the downloads. 8.17 megabits per second on the 3G versus 8.42 megabit per second on the 4G, which is kind of interesting. The upload is a big is a different story though. So you're getting nearly six times the upload speed on 4G that you would do on 3G. But I think that really sums it up. I'll add a bunch of these on the actual review post. Um, just to show a consistent level they, they, they the 4g does max out about 14 megabit per second um, and the 3g never gets really above 10 but this is about <laughs> representative as you can see I didn't do anything and, and they've both got the same kind of level of reception but that's what's the funny thing about 4g versus 3g it's not necessarily a cut and dried issue is it Here's another little simple browser test for you doing a search on Google for cats. Well, I mean, I'm not seeing a huge amount of difference between the two. Let's try getting into a site together. Right, well, the 4G, 4G on, on, on the in focus is definitely slower, isn't it? So I'm not sure what that's saying. That's, uh, 
Let's go to the Wikipedia page. Yeah, so octa-core processing and extra RAM clearly makes a difference when browsing even with a 3G against a 4G. So there you have it folks, the InFocus M512 4G LTE quad-core. Some of uh, the parts, well, it's, for the price, quite an amazing piece of uh, hardware. It's fast, um, it works, you know, very adequately, yeah, very well. It's uh, certainly um, up to par with most of the, the cheapo um, Chinese claims we've seen. And of course, you've got the added benefit of 4G. Although, as we've seen, that really means more in terms of upload rather than download, uh, depending upon your pr service provider, of course. Overall, we're, yes, the price is, is knockout, really. So that's really the killer for this kind, of, this kind of phone. And it's a pretty good looking phone. This is the state of the art, you know, in terms of medium, medium range phones right now. Well, the one thing we did find a little bit worrying is it gets a little hot under GPS when you're using it for a navigation system. We didn't demo that on video, but it did get hot. That's something to be aware of um, if you're a heavy GPS user. There you go, the InFocus M512. As usual, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and subscribe to the channel so we can bring you more cool stuff. Cheers.